Well, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to our latest uh, webcast, looking at uh, global business services and finance processes, and how do we move the needle on performance uh, coming out of, hopefully, coming out of a crisis. So uh, very timely, uh, timely discussion. So thank you for joining us. And I know we have people from around the world. So I know for some of you, it's very late at night, and for some of you, it's very early in the morning. So thank you. My name's Dan French. I'm founder and CEO at Consider Solutions. Um, my pleasure to host this discussion. I uh, I know many of you, and uh, so uh, hello again. And those I don't uh, welcome for the first time. I'm very pleased to have with me today Steve Fox, who's a former VP of Global Business Services at Thermo Fisher Scientific. Welcome, Steve. Very good. Thank you, Dan. Great to be here. So uh, between uh, Steve's experience and uh, my experience and observations, we're going to share some um, some uh, views and a, a roadmap for you today. And I think you're in for an interesting discussion. So here's the session today. Um, I'm here to talk really about introductions, but also the role of GBS, um, you know, finance operations, shared services, and GBS in a post-COVID world, and also where we've got to so far. And then I'm going to hand over to Steve to talk about some of the critical outcomes required and how we prioritize initiatives and how we fund and drive uh, some of the immediate cost, cost and cash impact. And I'm going to come back with some thoughts for the road ahead. Now, there is a Q&A session. So as you go through, there's a lot of interesting and thought provoking stuff here. So ask questions as we go through anything, you know, crosses your mind, you want to know more about. There's a question panel in the GoToWebinar interface in front of you on your uh, interface, on your desktop or your phone. So you ask your questions through there and we'll endeavor to answer them at the end. If we can't uh, get to them all today, we'll respond to the others by email. So either way, you're gonna get a response. Uh, so please do that. If you've got a technical problem, please use the same interface and you'll uh, get that, um, uh, you'll get some response from some of our team. It's a 40 minute session. So we're gonna try and make best use of your time. Um, so uh, yeah, so let's get going. Um, many of you know about Consider Solutions. For those of you who don't, this is just our perspective on the world. It just gives you an understanding of how we're coming to look at these problems. So this focus on world class, the the desire and aspiration and expertise to drive better business results, reduce the reduce the cost of finance and operations, optimize cash flow, and have better risk management, which we believe are kind of four of the key key planks. And we deliver it through the, uh, the, the pillars on the right, um, financial control and compliance, risk management and process transformation. And certainly our GBS and process excellence uh, uh, practice leads very much down that road, process transformation road. Um, we are very fortunate to have um, companies around the world that influence us. Um, we're, uh, we're proud to work with them, but also they challenge us with uh, questions and are the catalysts for webcasts like this, the catalyst for some of the research we do, and I also um, keep us very much focused on continuing to raise our game in terms of innovation about how we might approach some of the kind of problems and issues we discuss. So to start with, got a, we've got five short little polls for you. They're all anonymous, but they're just to help you get some sense about who you're amongst here, and so you can understand some of the feedback of the following questions. So this is pretty straightforward. It's how do you describe yourself? Are you one? Primarily shared services, global business services. Are you two, primarily finance? Are you three, uh, IT or IS? Four, one other business function, or five, or a consultant and advisor? This should be pretty easy, even if it's early in the morning for you in California. Um, so it's just, how do you self-describe yourself? What's the best, uh, the best description for you? One of those, five seconds. Hopefully it will take you very little to work that out. Um, so let's have a look at that. Uh, let's have a look at the results, please. So we've got about 63% of you see yourself shared services GBS, which is good. 17% of finance and then smaller uh, in the other areas. Okay, so we're talking to the right community. That's a good start. Um, right, so let me talk a little bit about shared services and GBS and finance operations, if, if you don't use those terms. So up until COVID, we'd made great progress in you know, 20, 30 years, 30 years, it's time flies. Um, and this is just a history. We all know the kind of the lift and shift idea of taking processes into a centralized uh, operating model, 
and then the move to outsourcing and the, the various outsourcing and offshore um, geographies. And then in in the last decade, we've got more sophisticated. We've you know we've got more focus on simplification and standardization. There's been a big debate and a lot of focus on global process ownership, and this balance between process and center of uh, expertise matrix, and really developing the concept of, of GBS. Um, and throughout all of that, productivity benchmarks have steadily improved. I think without doubt, and, and we've made a lot of a, a lot of progress there. And, and obviously, in the last few years, there's been a big focus on transformation, both digital transformation uh, and process transformation. So that's kind of interesting bit of history, and it's kind of important to look at that. We also last year did some um, research, some direct research with uh, shared services and global business services leaders. Um, and it was not uh, it was not multiple choice research. It was sort of a whiteboard research, really getting to the root of the issues. And and we, there are a few questions we asked. I'm going to share two of them here. We asked, what do your executive stakeholders demand on you as a shared services or global business services leader? What are you demanded, expected to deliver? And this is pretty much what came out uh, aggregated across all of the uh, 50 or so um, leaders that participated. So direct cost reduction obviously was the first thing that got raised. And for all those mechanisms, um, you know, that was a very, very clear focus and one of the clear mandates for the setup of shared services in the early days. Improving business unit experience, making finance easier, making buying easier, all those elements and, and helping start to improve the process in the business units. Enhancing risk management, control and compliance was a big, um, a big demand. Certainly the idea of centralizing transaction processing, centralizing finance processes. Um, in common systems that allowed a level of control that had hitherto not been there. Flawless issue resolution um, by the shared service centers, the GBS organization, and preserving process knowledge that was once in the business and now in the center. So I don't think anybody would argue with those. Those are, you know, that's, they're pretty aggregate responses. And I think we'd all agree that cost reduction has always been up there at the top. But the more interesting question was we then asked them, OK, that's what you're demanded. That's what's demanded of you by executive stakeholders. But your experienced leaders in your own right, what do you aspire to? And I found this interesting. So these four big themes came out. And the first one was to enhance reputation capabilities of value creator as well as cost reducer, which was based on the premise that you know, cost reduction is all very well, but you can't cost reduce yourself uh, into infinity. Um, so at some point, you've got to start doing something more than reducing costs. And uh, that is one of the key, uh, probably the key aspiration that came out time and time again. And related to that was the idea that uh, shared services and GBS should become a center of excellence with the expertise to uh, automate as well as optimize as well as operate. So we see shared services GBS as an operating center, but to optimize and automate as well is a key thing to shorten the cycle time to continuously innovate and improve. But obviously that starts to blur the lines between GBS, shared services, and the classic IT IS organization. And it's interesting to see in the past few years, a number of uh, global business services leaders in major corporations around the world who are also now the corporation CIO. So merging the CIO function, chief information officer function with the GBS function. And we're seeing a, a growing uh, push to that. And I think it makes a lot of sense in the way that we're operating these days. Third one is end-to-end -end business process collaboration for the for the shared services GBS leaders who own the core finance processes and some of the core uh, and even when they own uh, procurement processes. Um, the the drive to create process collaboration up and down the organisation of value chains across the business, not just the the elements of the activity within the scope of GBS or shared services. And I think this is an important trend as well. We're seeing a lot of this where the GBS leaders are, are driving process ownership across the organization and really starting to reduce cycle times and, and get better understanding of the end-to-end -end process. And the fourth is building a talent pipeline for the entire business. So if if you do all the other things well, um, you're gonna have a, a set of talent that everyone in the organization is gonna want, a head office and business units and the rest of it. So I think those are kind of interesting, but of course all that's great. And then COVID happened. So we had, you know, everything was chugging along, you know, improving happily. And uh, we had this uh, experience and of course, offices closed, shared service centers closed, manufacturing plants closed, you know, business continuity plans came into action. 
but our, immediately our end-to-end -end processes start getting challenged. We you know, realize they weren't all executing the way they should because we're, people weren't in the places we expect them to be and we couldn't do some of the things we needed to. So clearly had a P&L impact and certainly raised new risks we weren't really um, expecting. A massive cash flow impact for many organizations. And as everyone has told me since the beginning of COVID, the past three months has seen a kind of tenfold increase in fraud attempts on on business finances, whether it's uh, vendor fraud or, uh, or one of those, uh, um, you know, AP fraud kind of activities. But a lot of a lot of focus on that because the fraudsters know whenever there's change in behavior, change of habits, people aren't quite sure what to do. It's the best time to do what they do. Um, and of course, then our regulatory compliance oversight, Sarbanes-Oxley and other things, we've also got to make sure we can continue to do that in a way that we hadn't planned to before. So all that's, you know, that's, we kind of, we know that, we've all experienced that, right? But one of the challenges I think is we've been very subsumed by the COVID crisis and, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out. Uh, we've also got a recession coming our way that probably already hit us which is she could even dwarf this COVID crisis and make um, us look back on this as kind of quite pleasant times. So, you know, part of this discussion is about, is not just how do we come out of COVID well, it's how do we come out of COVID well, facing an economic um, downturn, the like we may never have seen before. Now, whenever we get into downturns, three things come under intense focus. The number one thing is how do we drive revenue as an organization? So, and in COVID particularly, there's organizations who basically said the revenue is going to be what the revenue is going to be because the nature of COVID and stay at home orders and lockdown means that a lot of what we're doing ain't going to change. Maybe there's a push to online, um, but you know some organizations are just having to weather that storm. Other organizations are in the you know, situation where their, their products and services are directly related to uh, a COVID opportunity, so then they can really put their foot in the gas. But irrespective of what you do on the left-hand side, everybody is focused on, well, you know, expense and cash flow, those are two things we've got to get our, our heads around. And in GBS, in finance and in shared services, we have to a greater or lesser extent an impact on all of those. And you know, it's worth uh, thinking about that and bearing that in mind. I mean, you'd, obviously expense and cash flow have a big um, uh, affected heavily by shared service and GBS. But if you think about um, credit and order to cash, the way in which we uh, create that environment might loosen up opportunities for revenue. The way we manage our supply chain might, might also help um, with, uh, you know, fulfilling customer demand. So um, another poll for you. Um, just want you to uh, respond. You can respond as many of these as you want. Um, Obviously, if you respond to number one, it doesn't really make much sense to respond to anything else. But what's the top priority change during COVID in your business? One is we didn't really have a change in priorities because it was largely business as usual. We kind of have, you know, been through this with, you know, the least possible change. Number two is a big focus on revenue, sales and marketing, because we realize we can uh, grow revenue and push revenue in this environment. Three is cash preservation. Four is expense control and five is some other. And of course, you may well have uh, two or, or more of those. So if you just want to select all that apply, it's, um, as I say, it's anonymous. This is just so you can see what the general trend is around uh, the uh, audience here. So you can enter as many as you want. Um, probably, I assume it's going to be one or two. Uh, let's have a look at the results. So cash conservation number one and expense control number two that's exactly what I would have guessed um, but you know it's good to see that some people you know there's 24 percent of businesses here who didn't see a major change of priorities which is um, extremely good news for those businesses so um, we're also putting together have put together a survey on preparing for the aftermath um, you might not have seen this yet, but you are going to get an email of this after the uh, webcast today. It's it's a little questionnaire. There's 14 questions, multiple choice. It takes you three minutes. I would ask you when you get the email, please do try and respond to it because that's going to be a more informed piece of research that comes out of this. You'll get the results, uh, the analysis and the research. And these 14 questions are kind of quite um, insightful. It'll um, hopefully help us all. So. Um, 
so that you'll get that. So when you get it, please do it. It'll be good for you. So with that in mind, um, I'd like to uh, hand over now to Steve. Uh, Steve Fox is, uh, we might be reaching calmer waters, but the wave and the storm ahead might be bigger than we expected. So I'd like to hand over to Steve, former VP GBS at Thermo Fisher Scientific. Steve. Very good. Thank you, Dan. And uh, appreciate the opportunity to, to spend some time with, with everybody this afternoon, this morning, this evening, whatever is a, is applicable for you. So first of all, it's kind of the things we'll go through. I'm just going to give a little bit of my background, just a, a minute or less, and then talk about um, kind of what we're hearing, you know, out there in the in in, in the world from our uh, from our colleagues and um, and clients and um, and individuals we're talking to in the in the in the finance and IT worlds. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about um, um, kind of what's in front of us, how we can prioritize initiatives to help deal with with the environment we we find ourselves in, and in, in, in the initiatives and strategies we want to we want to leverage. Uh, moving forward, as we work through, as Dan mentioned, the um, kind of the the, the uh, recession, depending on your perspective, that we're either in the midst of or or, or is coming soon. Um, and then we'll we'll uh, I'll share some thoughts and ideas um, that have helped me in the past getting through difficult times um, around driving cost and in and, and cash uh, uh, positive impacts from a from a GPS and, and shared service center perspective. So. Um, just a, a little bit about my background. I spent, you know, 28 years in, in, in you know, call it the kind of global corporate organizations. I spent those 28 years in, in three companies. Um, it really cut my teeth back in the early 90s um, in, uh, in in setting up shared service centers, um, you know, both greenfield and brownfield operations. As you can see on this slide, you know, it really across the gamut of kind of the traditional uh, functions that are uh, that, that comprise most uh, most global business services around P2P. Um, order to cash, record to report, and also um, also owned uh, hire to retire functions within the HR payroll and uh, and uh, kind of the employee space as well as uh, customer care. So, I think just you know the the, the highlight here is right. I've 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 I've, um, I've I've dealt with a lot of a lot of the challenges that go with not just setting up and influencing the the ability to get a a global business service center strategy put in place, but also you know kind of the day in and day out operational aspects of running those centers which um, are uh, are in front of all of us you know virtually every day um, so just to um, share a little bit of, of kind of lessons learned from from my experience here is that um, you know we've we've uh, we've all been in a position right where you're either setting up a center or, or, or you're you're bringing in new work integrating new organizations um, you know, I've, I've, a, a few things I've taken away around the executive commitment areas that, you know, it really, it's nice, it's great, it's what gets the, the capital request signed, it's what gets the lease on the building signed, et cetera, et cetera, right? It's really what gives you the remit to go do what, what, what you want to do and what, what the company needs and wants you to do. But at the end of the day, this exercise, from my perspective, is, is, is an exercise in influencing and, and really, you know, uh, uh, catering to your key stakeholders. And so the executive commitment, is, you know, is necessary and a requirement on the front end. But ultimately, it's how you work with your stakeholders and building your stake level, your stakeholder level of confidence up is, is what's critical. Um, secondly, around cost reduction, right? I mean, it, initially, you know, with the business case to, to, to set up a center, um, you know, I say, you know, I say here, relatively speaking, it's a breeze to start with because the the you know the the plan is there. Um, second, whether it's you know a labor arbitrage play or whether it's just it's a co-location play, um, you know the the initial um, effort around meeting business case and actually beating business case right can be um, can be significantly easier than it is you know kind of the day in day out year over year productivity increases that become you know I, I think in a lot of cases. The calling card um, for shared service centers, and, and kind of what I want to, what I'm going to share some some thoughts and ideas here is, 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 you know, once you get past that, then then, then how do we really become that value creator and 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 providing that value proposition for the organization in, in, in the long term? Um, uh, again, another big part of what what I what I learned early on is that, you know, standardizing processes, um, you know, easy to say, hard to do. Um, there are lots of different ways to kind of get to the get to the end, um, get to the end game, if you will, and that um, and that that uh, leveraging technology, leveraging you know process know-how, really rethinking and re-engineering you know the traditional ways of doing things is difficult. Um, and as a part of doing that, I also uh, I'll talk about defects here in a little bit, but um, my focus you know kind of you know initially 
was on process standardization. Everything's got to be the same. Um, but once you get a level of standardization in place, my focus turned to defects and really fixing those defects because those defects are what, um, at least in my experience, um, caused the caused the processes to kind of go off the rails, if you will. So my focus uh, uh, very quickly has had, had become moving to defect correction, defect resolution, and really you know driving defects out of the out of our processes upstream and downstream, quite frankly. So uh, so as Dan mentioned, right, we're 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 in some you know definitely we all are in the middle of some unprecedented times here. And um, you know, this is just a, a handful of, of points here relative to kind of where we find ourselves today. And I, I think um, um, all of us have done some things, you know, over the last three plus months that coming into 2020, we would have thought would have been impossible, right? Talk about remote close. Talk about having a quarter end close being done remotely. I would, I would expect for most of you um, that wasn't in your, your, your G's and O's or your goals and objectives as, as you entered 2020. But that's been done in, in, in virtually, you know, every company has done some degree, if not a total remote close, have done some degree of a remote close. Um, and, um, and I think the other key theme that's come out over the last few, three months that we've heard from GBS leaders is that there's a much larger appreciation for digitization and that transformation that's required to really um, operate in an efficient, in a, in an efficient manner um, in a much more kind of paperless remote um, environment, which we've we've all by force, quite frankly, had to fi have found ourselves in. Um, and, um, and and I'll talk here in, in a few minutes just around. I think the, 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 there's some great energy and some great um, innovation that's happened here uh, by necessity just to just to get our daily jobs done. Um, but uh, but I do think there's, you know, uh, an overwhelming sense of cautious optimism in what we've done here's some you know just a, a few quotes from from some gbs leaders we've spoken to um and uh, i think the key you know the key here there's been a a lot of unprecedented um things that have happened um to us and that then we had to react to to get our day-to-day -day jobs done and just you know the basic fundamental um kind of blocking and tackling if you will of, of what what is required of us and our teams we've had to do it in a much different way in a much different environment, um, and 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 you know we've we've come through that um, over the last three to four months. I would say you know most every company we've talked to and leader we've talked to said, hey, you know we we've done things that we didn't think we were going to be able to get done, or that we didn't we, we we didn't have a we didn't have a path to that end game, right? We didn't we, we didn't have the roadmap, you know, we didn't take the weeks and months and put the teams together to get us to do what we've actually been able to do in in in, in quite short order. So this is um this is just a, a a handful of statistics from a recent CFO survey. Um, you know, Dan talked a little bit about the recession, and and, and quite frankly, it started in March um, for a number of organizations. And as you can see, the you know kind of the numbers here and the responses to this survey is that um you know well over half of the CFOs in this uh, responded to this survey. You know, say hey, you know we're gonna we're gonna be in the middle of a recession. It's gonna you know last through the end of the year into 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 2021. Um, you know managing cost, maximizing cash, um, key component of what is going to keep us in a good spot as we as we come out of this come out of this recession. Um, and that uh, I thought it was interesting the bottom point here, you know, the mass, mass majority, right, of, of CFOs were concerned about the health of their suppliers and, and you know it, it makes sense, right? Is you know, you've got the companies out there who have you know whether it's whether it's a sole source supplier for for a raw material or a, or a, or a product, or whether it is um, um, or whether it's just the, the the highest quality, the lowest cost supplier that they're using. Um, clearly, um, um, an integrated need to make sure that we're we're monitoring and, and 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 looking at the health of those of those suppliers. So. This has kind of been, you know, in, in in times of uncertainty, for whatever reason, right? There's, there's, you know, whether it's business downturn, whether it's kind of a macro and global um, um, environment we find ourselves in now. Um, this has always kind of been my checklist, right? For, um, for what do you do in times like this, right? We, we, you know, I talked a little bit about cash and cost containment, and I'll dive into that here a little bit um, uh, uh, in a couple minutes. But uh, 
you know, one thing that's been raised that we've heard from folks is this idea of, of, of zero-based budgeting and, and kind of starting at, starting at ground zero, right, when you're building, when you're building a budget for, you know, it, whether, you know, a lot of us will find ourselves in a month or two here in, in, in the budgeting cycle for 2021. Um, and, um, and I do think zero-based budgeting will be something that will, will, will become more, more of the norm as we're building up, a, building up a budget kind of from ground zero and really justifying expenses, you know, at the line item level, which is what that is. Um, I think, uh, you know, the, as, as we work down this list a little bit, just, to, you know, we've data insights um, and, um, and the ability to respond, react, and know what's in front of you. Um, is, is, is really critical now. Um, and especially as we're building up, you know, plan, uh, our plans and our strategy for the balance of the year, um, those data insights are going to be key drivers um, for how we, how we look at the future and how we plan for the future. And so having, you know, real-time um, data is going to help us um, focus on being as agile as we possibly can. Um, the, next, uh, the next item around technology is, you know, a number of us have, have have existing technologies in place that we leverage in, and I'll say kind of traditional or the, you know, the, the, the kind of core use um, of those technologies. I think, you know, there's, there, there's been some, some really nice work from, from folks we've talked to on, on leveraging those, those technologies they have in place in kind of new and innovative ways, um, as well as, as you look to prioritize um, some, some, some new initiatives around technologies, um, it's key that those are, are aligned with what your strategy is, what your business plan is, and that you're ultimately able to deliver the expected outcome um, with, uh, with the investment uh, being outlaid for those, for those new technologies. Now, um, the future of work is going to change, right? It, it, it already has for many, many, many of us. Uh, there'll be a new working model in place that, that's much more um, focused on, on remote access, uh, paperless um, work, and, um, and, and really kind of uh, leveraging a whole new and different level of of collaboration um, and, 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 and along with that goes kind of the idea of you know being able to innovate in a, um, in a distributed way um, and so that's going to require right that we that we think about how do we how do we interact and, and contract and, and work with our people how do we develop them how do we keep them engaged and, 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 and continue to instill that connectivity you know with, with the organization as a whole but also with with the, with the GBS function and with, with the specific um, objectives we have for them and um, in the coming months and, and, and into 2021. Um, and I talked a little bit finally about supplier health and, 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 and looking at, at our suppliers' uh, contributions to our businesses. And, and, um, and I'll talk a little bit here in a second about uh, uh, supplier scorecards because that's a key part of what um, we can use as, and leverage as, a, um, as much more of an objective look at our supply base and, and who is really uh, uh, contributing the most to, to our company's success. So um, as I, as, you know, I, you look through uncertain times, right, I man, and I do think there, there is a degree of, of prioritization here, even though we, you know, you can skip from one to three to two back to five, right? But the idea is, um, you know, leveraging this list to kind of drive what is, uh, what's in front of us moving forward. So I thought this was an interesting uh, uh, set of project, uh, projections from GenPAC. Just I'm going to highlight just a couple things. First is e-invoicing. You know, you look at the beginning of the year to kind of where companies see themselves going in the future. It's almost a three times increase, right, from 30% up to 80%. Um, you know, another another item here I thought was interesting on the virtual close and reporting, which I talked about earlier, is that, you know, you know arguably an infinite increase, you know, from 0%, but there's a... Um, there's also, if you look at the cloud-based, you know, kind of systems of intelligence and systems of engagement, you know, significant increases in, in what the expectation is of adoption as, as companies look forward and, and, and really reacting and responding to what the last three to four months have, have, have highlighted for us all. So um, I wanted to, to, to share this template, and I'm not going to obviously go into a ton of detail here, right, because you, you can see the examples, and these are just examples of initiatives. Some that, uh, that you know, a number of that I've worked through personally, and a number that we've heard from 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 customers and clients that are that are focused on. Uh, but really, this this is meant to be a template for making you know informed decisions around prioritizing initiatives. And the idea here is is that you you know you're going to have your list of initiatives. You got to have some degree of, of of measures around you know how long and what's going to cost to implement. What is the internal level of effort? Um, 
what are your projected targeted savings and, and what are the time to, to recognize uh, you know, those savings. And so um, the idea here is that this is really set to setting you up to, to objectively analyze and compare and contrast initiatives that you have and that you may have going forward and really drive um, uh, uh, an informed decision with the, you know, the kind of the main focus here being on, um, you know, savings versus effort and, and, and how long it's going to take you to get there. Um, I think another key component of this is the, um, is the resource requirements, right? Because you clearly got an operation to run. And if you, if, if, if you end up, you know, kind of doing an ABC um, um, prioritization and, you know, you have your A um, initiatives, which are the ones you think are the, the most important to get done quickest, um, you, you've got to develop the resource plan across that because you know, you're going to be leveraging people in, in different ways. But the core idea here is to, to just be ha to have a mechanism to be able to prioritize those initiatives. Um, we, we did a we did a, a, a great webcast with uh, with Gary Stedman, who's the leader of the Associated British Ports Shared Service Center. We did that back in May, um, and um, they, they had a really nice story to tell. Right, um, in, in 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 arguably very very short period of time six, seven month time frame kind of went from a standing start of let's go, you know, define and identify KPIs to, you know, kind of baseline performance and, and institutionalize some new habits um, and then move very quickly into a defect correction mode. Um, and you can see some of the key issues there around vendor master and some some goods received activity as well as PO compliance issues that they that they identified and, and moved quickly to correct. Then um, and I think a, a key part of this was undervalued creation where we Kind of highlighted and helped them work through this exercise of identifying if you if you kind of kind of equate that to U.S. dollars, it's about four million U.S. dollars that were you know very real, very tangible bottom line um, stimulus items that uh, that drove their ability to, to to you know kind of fund new initiatives, focus on um, focus on some employee uh, development items and some training, but. Uh, but if you look at you know the the story of ABP right, think of them in general terms of about a billion dollar um, organization, and and in a in a three to four month time frame, driving about four million dollars in real tangible goodness to the bottom line is is, is really a, a positive story, and and it was it was part of an overall strategy right to really start to drive um, this um, this this uh, higher level of of, of data um, insights and agility around their around their um, their paid uh, P2P processes, um, and this is a uh, so this is an example. This is a, a dashboard that uh, that we worked with ABP on and, and, and created for them. That really is 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 this is an example of the daily the daily insights and daily dashboard that we we worked with them on 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 really operating uh, operationalizing um, and automating the look at their process. And just just very quickly, the top third of this is meant to be kind of a, an operational look. Um, you know. Backlog, invoices processed, kind of a volume throughput uh, set of metrics. The middle section is a defect look, right, at um, at areas where uh, things didn't go as planned and, and, and require extra work, and so um, and, and they had had defined their defects um, um, for for what was important to them. Um, and then the third section is is a control and compliance area where again ABP had helped to find or had defined, and, and we helped them put together the analysis to look at. Um, kind of what was important to them from a from a control and compliance perspective, and this is something that gets, you know, can can get used on a daily basis. You know, you can look at it trend week, quarter, month, year, um, but uh, but I just wanted to share that look with you. And this, this is this is this is an example of their their dashboard out of um, out of their operational platform. Um, and so I talked a little bit earlier about uh, kind of the, the ABP example on the, on cash flow and PL stimulus and. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go through each of these bullet points in the in the uh, respecting time here, but I think a big a big component here is around. Um, so we talked about initiate uh, initiatives earlier. Um, I've got a lot of experience in driving cash flow and P&L stimulus for a number of companies, and and we've got some ranges here. And this is an example based off a, a company with 10 billion dollars in annual spend. And and if you take the low end of the ranges that we've identified here for cash flow and the P&L boost um, component. And then if we said, hey, you know, th th that's about $30 million. If we use the low end of those ranges, which is based off actual experience, if we would even just cut that in half and say, I think we could deliver half of this. We're talking about on, on a $10 billion um, annual spend um, amount, 
about $15 million in, 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 in real tangible goodness in, in a, in a two-month-plus period at, at zero cost. And the idea here is, you know, whether, whether the, these funds are used to boost profits or reduce losses, you know, right, that's obviously, you know, each organization makes that makes their decisions. But I think a key part of what's important here is, you know, this can fund transformation, fund new business improvement initiatives. And, and in the case of organizations that are, are looking at staffing cuts, it can help soften that blow, if you will. So to kind of wrap this up, wrap up my section, um, I'll tell you, right, there's, you guys have lived this and you've driven this, these efforts, right? There's been a lot of transformative work that's been done over the last three to four months, things we never thought we would either have to do or wanted to do or could do in some cases. Um, there's a lot of organizational energy out there that have gotten us to this point, right? Um, you, you know, the things you've done, you wouldn't have been able to do without really harnessing that energy and driving it um, to get the to, to get the core fundamental um, items done that we've been able you've been able to d get done and accomplish. Um, and if you could take that energy, align your initiatives, as we mentioned earlier, with kind of what your organization's needs are, short term and longer term, um, and then go through your uh, prioritization of those initiatives with with an eye towards what what gives you the biggest kind of bang for the buck. Um, I think we've it's a great recipe, right? Um, you know whether it's been forceful or whether it's been something you've always wanted to do, you've had high ambitions, you've had to, right, in the, in the environment we're operating in now. Um, so what I would say is, you know, keep those ambitions high, drive that agenda that you, uh, that you either have put together or will be putting together. And at the end of the day, if you're doing all that, you harness this, you know, enormous amount of energy that's been, you know, that you have access to now. Um, and, and, if, and if at worst case, you're settling for better, for, excuse me, for better, you're there, right? You are. You're. We're. You're going to exit this. Uh, this time of kind of unprecedented uncertainty with a with a better set of processes and tools in place to really drive your initiatives for the for the longer term. So. Uh, so with that, Dan, I'll hand it back to you, and I appreciate the time. Thanks, Steve. That was a great set of experiences and some good tools and techniques there that people can use. So thanks for that. So um, I'm sure you've got questions. There's some really important stuff that Steve shared. So if you haven't asked a question yet, pop it in on the panel and let's get it uh, let's get it sorted out. So just uh, bringing some of this together, I mean, I think it's clear that uh, when this is over, meaning the COVID piece being over, it still won't be smooth sailing. But we know that business is kind of managing threat and opportunity at the same time. So stormy waters or not, we've got some uh, we've got some work to do, um, and I think we just got to be aware that. We got this uh, recessionary uh, effect on us as well. A um, couple of questions here for you. So looking at post-COVID, what type of digital initiatives, and Steve talked about the need for digitization for all the obvious reasons uh, for remote working, which uh, what type of digital initiative are you looking to prioritize for the next 12 to 18 months? Is it one on the revenue side, point of sale, whether that's uh, going to um, e-commerce or whatever, is it point of sale changes? Is it two purchase to pay? Is it three order to cash, four record to report, or general accounting, or five other? If there's several, just select all that apply. Again, it's anonymous, it's just useful to share. So what are the things that you're looking to prioritize in terms of digitization? Um, because we know we've all kind of woken up to that, uh, the urgency of that in the way we've been uh, working and forced to work. So let's have, um, say you can select one, two or more options. Let's uh, just do that. Let's have a look at some, let's have a look at the answers. So you can see what the people think. So purchase to pay is big. Interesting revenue. So the revenue cycle, 38%, and I suspect that is focusing on shift online. Purchase to pay uh, is big, nearly 70%. And record to report, obviously, this remote close. We've done so well, right, doing remote closing. Um, you'd, uh, you, might be, you might argue that we're already there, maybe. So thank you for that. Um, one other question, and I'm in, I'm very interested in this because Steve talked about the whole um, future of work thing. It's going to be a massive issue, and I'm sure it's a topic of conversation in every company, including ours. So what aspects of the future of work do you see as most likely to develop post-COVID? Now, these are very specific questions, so I want you to think about this. So number one is working for home becomes a new normal for more than half of your staff. It's not just we do a bit more. It's just more than half of your staff are working from home as a normal operating model. Number two is commensurate with that, we reduce our corporate and uh, GBS office space. Three, we eliminate tasks with paper dependency, checks, invoices, contracts, all that good stuff. Number four, 
again, this is customer supplier meetings replaced by virtual meetings at a scale of 50% or more. So it's not we do a little bit more, it's like we radically change how we operate in terms of interacting with customers and suppliers by 50% or more. And five, enhancing global collaboration and connectedness beyond video conferencing. I think if you're anything like me, video conferencing has ruined my brain. <laughs> Uh, I thought I did a lot of it before. I had no idea. Uh, there's got to be better ways. It's it's a it's a bit one dimensional. So, do you think is the the big uh, thing that's going to develop post COVID? And you can select many. Is it working from home for 50 percent more of, or more of staff? Two, reduced office space. Three, eliminating any paper dependence. Four, customer supplier meetings more than 50 percent moving uh, virtual. And five, are better ways of collaborating globally. Let's have a look at your answers there. See what you get. So this is kind of an interesting thing. So working from home for more than 50% of your staff, 75% think that's going to be that big. That's amazing. Okay, that is interesting. And then, but obviously 65% are going to reduce the office space. I can tell you this, if 75% are going to be doing the first, I'm sure at least 75% will be doing the second. Um, that's eliminate tasks with paper dependency. That's kind of interesting. Thank you. And I hope you find that useful as well. Um, well, what I'd like to say, I mean, this is, we all know this. I think we've done an amazing job. Everybody on this call has done an amazing job. Steve talked about the fact you've been through three months ends and a quarter end, remote closing in a way you've never believed possible. And we've developed a kind of level of fitness we never even realized we had, and, and we probably have developed it very rapidly. And it's all about stamina, strength, agility, control, and speed. And I think, as Steve said, if we can harness that coming out of this, we've got a real good uh, step ahead. So I think it's worth thinking about how do you harness the energy creativity and innovation you've had in your own organizations. So if you go back to January, or you know, if you operate in China, maybe if you go back to November, um, the idea that before all this started, the idea you'd be doing completely remote closes, nobody in the offices, um, no paper operations, it'd been mission impossible, not a chance, you'd have laughed. But what's been achieved, we've scaled some amazing peaks. You talk to companies, they can't even believe themselves how quickly they turned on a dime. And as, as Steve said, if you've got a, you know, we've, people have got now roadmaps and plans about how they're not just dealing with this, but how they're going to deal with the, the recession coming. So we're in a better shape than we'd think. So I think that's an amazing piece. But when it comes to strategic priorities, you know, these, these are the five big uh, strategic priorities we're seeing um, organizations talk about. So again, this is the final poll of the day. Which of these strategies would you rate as critical for your organization to pursue? Again, it, you can have all that apply. It's anonymous, but you just get these general aggregate answers. One, to get a cash and P&L stimulus in your business that, to, to give you a temporary bump up. Two, drive the agenda for value creation as well as cost reduction. Three, exploit data for rapid decisions and response. Four, drive to optimize and digitize where possible. And five is define this future work, this new operating model, how we're gonna, how we're gonna live in the future, how we're gonna work in the future. So again, this is the last one for you. I think this is gonna be an important thing to share. It's gonna be interesting. So let's have a look at uh, what you think about that. You can select all that apply. Do you want to drive? You need a push for cash and uh, cash and P&L stimulus, which is basically cost reduction. Um, drive agenda for value creation as well as cost reduction. Data for rapid decisions response. Optimize digitized processes and define the new future of work. Let's have a look at the answers, please. So. Just under half of you think uh, cash and PL stimulus is important, which means the other half of you are doing pretty well uh, cash and cost wise. That's great. Um, optimize and digitize processes up there, three quarters of you. And then secondly, exploit data. And uh, great. OK, thank you for that. So I think what we've learned. You know, it's if it is true, it is always true, and it's not just in in our world. But I, I like this uh, analogy here. Well, it's a piece of it's a quote from a surgeon's note on performance. It's from a medical profession, quite quite timely in the in the world we're living in. But you know, we always hope there's some kind of silver bullet, special way of solving problems. If we only did this or that or implemented this technology, the fact is there aren't any quick fixes or easy hacks. And the past three months have actually demonstrated that. But what I like here is success requires making a hundred small steps go right. It's all about collaboration, teamwork, no slip ups, no goofs, everyone pitching in. I think we've learned that and I think we would do well for us to harness that in the future. So it is all about execution and, um, and execution is about getting stuff done. Um, so that's what we've talked through. We've got just a couple of minutes to do your questions. So have you got um, 
you have keep those questions coming in because once we can't answer now we will answer by email so i'm going to be quick with these because you've got some interesting questions here so uh right we'll take this one steve i like your prioritization template for initiatives what is the reality of making it work what is the hardest piece to get right you want to give a thought about that that's yeah, prioritization of the initiatives you had yeah gr gr great question and, and and you know to just kind of cut to the chase it's 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 pretty simple but it covers a lot of uh a lot of important topics you know can often be missed so i'd ask you to encourage your team to come up with a list of initiatives right to kind of drive what your objectives are for the near term and and, and you know where we're at now for the balance of the year and into 2021 um and um and the, the you know the key thing here is is to to break down you know the benefits relative to what's delivered at implementation and what, what's delivered along uh you know kind of in in, in the longer term and in, in delivering on those uh those business case um, uh, kind of promises, if you will, and that um, and that there's always a lag, right? There's always a lag in, in the time that you implement and kind of get things set up and rolling to when you're going to recognize the full business case goodness. Um, but that uh, you know, if you're focusing on you know kind of the components and the uh, that I laid out in that in that template, um, and really taking an objective, you know, kind of real honest look at them, uh, you're you're getting yourself to a good point where you're selecting the right initiatives for the right reasons. Um, and being able to to achieve and you know hold yourself accountable and achieve not just the the, the objectives you laid out, but hopefully um, exceed those uh, those benefit numbers. Thanks, Steve. And there's uh, several questions here asking for a copy of that uh, template, so that will be coming out to uh, everyone here. Um, another one you'll like this one, Steve. I like your daily operations dashboard you shared for ABP. How long did it take to implement? Yeah, so so that dashboard is uh, is, is pre configured, right? Um, it's a consider solution service, um, and uh, and really it, it's operational as soon as you know the data source is connected. Um, that takes you know that, that that's less than an hour to get that connected. But then uh, you know we'll get the initial data um, extracted, analyzed, and then you know within a within a within a you know two to three days from that per, from that point in time, um, that dashboard is operational and, and and ready for you to look at. So you know kind of once the once the once the data source is connected we're talking you know call it two to three days from that point and, and that dashboard is up and running so thank you Stephen. there's quite a few questions around your talks about cash and p l stimulus i'm just going to choose one of them here 15 million dollar cash stimulus for zero cost can you explain this sounds too good to be true yeah 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 okay. we, we we yeah we, we 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 get that a lot i've gotten that a lot in my career um around being able to drive some of these uh, some of these numbers um you know hey every company whether i've worked in it or, or worked as a part of and, and or, or help consult with um you know, we've looked at um we've looked at the the balance sheet we looked at their the internal you know, the company's balance sheet we also looked at their their suppliers balance sheet and that's really what this is a, is an exercise in mining balance sheet numbers and we, and we have yet to find i have yet to find an example where where we didn't find you know, you know, relatively speaking, significant and material uh, uh, sources of cash, and, and we're not just talking about duplicate payments and that kind of stuff. I mean, there's companies out there that do that, but you know, th th this goes deeper. It's a lot more of, of a reconciliation effort versus kind of an inquiry, you know, exercise, um, and it focuses on on liabilities you've got booked as well as you know the the items that are sitting on your supplier's books, which typically go, you know, um, unqueried, if you will, or un uninterrogated, if you will. Um, and that we've got a service, right? That 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 ultimately is free of charge that identifies these. Um, and I'd I'd love to be able anybody has interest in this um, and diving into the detail. I'd I'd love to be able to to have a quick discussion and, and talk to you about it. But um, um, but the you know the 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 idea here, right, is that there's money out there. There's unidentified sources of cash that have been um, that we've been able to to mine for our clients and um, and, and really help drive. Um, you know the ability to pay and fund initiatives help drive the zero-based budgeting concept, where you're you know kind of you're, you're paying for your for your initiatives as you go, um, and at the end of the day, you know this is a this is a net zero cost to to our to uh, the people we help with this. Thank you, Steve. That's great. I um, I'm conscious of the fact that our 40 minutes has become 45 minutes. I do appreciate your uh, time for joining us for this period. I hope you found it thought-provoking. We got uh, some stormy waters ahead. We thought we were coming into calm waters, but possibly not. Hopefully, Steve's insights, experience, and tools and tactics have helped. Um, we'll get the rest of your questions. If you've got anything else? Uh, drop me an email or um, or send a pigeon, uh, something suitably technologically 
advanced. Um, thanks very much indeed. Enjoy the rest of your day or the rest of your evening or the rest of your night, depending where you are. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.